Pro Tech Son. Yo, no cap. This barricade tech is about to be bussing. Is that did I do it right? <laughs> Let's try it again. Let's do it better this time. Imagine the metal so dense that even Superman himself fears it. <sighs> yeah, you know, it's protection. All right, I know dome to some people is better, but we're not going to be talking about that today because today we're gonna to be talking about some good classic American muscle, the barricade, shit. All right, guys, on a more serious note, there is going to be a lot to learn about barricades. You will be very surprised how efficient that they can be. I'm not really going to go over why I think they're like, quote unquote, underrated, but more so show you what you can do with them, the uses that you can get out of them and let you judge it for yourself if you think they can be efficient for you and your squad. So I'm going to fly over the basics, but then we will quickly get into some uh, tips and tricks, some use cases, some synergies, counters, etc. And then we will get to my favorite part, the clip breakdowns. I feel like that's the best way to really show the use cases of the barricades and really just absorb a lot of information because you can actually see it in practice. But with that said, please remember that there are chapters. And if you want to just skip around the video, please feel free to do so. That's what they're there for. And the very last thing before we get started, if you like me or you feel like that you learned something in this video, please leave a like. If you love me and maybe one day want me to quit my day job, please subscribe. Let's get started. You can have up to four barricades placed down at one time. If you try to place another, the first one will disappear. You can right click to rotate the barricade. And if you look down towards the lower third of the barricade, you can actually pick it up. It actually took me quite a while to figure this out somehow, but yeah. Now this one applies to other gadgets as well. When I place my barricade, my first one, I will not automatically switch to my primary and you can get stuck caught looking at your tablet. So I would highly suggest that you get into the habit of switching to your primary every time you place down something to get into the habit of doing so. Now let's hop into some use cases. The first and most obvious use case of the barricade is instant cover, just boom, pop it down and now you are protected from enemy fire. You can use this to reload, maybe heal up. You can place them down for your teammates so they can heal up. Cover is always valuable in a gunfight. So this is a pixel peak setup. This requires two barricades. You place them right beside each other and you create this little gap. It is much harder for the enemy to shoot you than it is for you to shoot the enemy. And if you were to increase this gap just a little bit, it will make it easier for you to shoot the enemy but it will also make it a little easier for the enemy to shoot you also. This is especially useful if you have a medium or a light on your team so they can have cover and still use it offensively. And also this is useful if you have like a goo gun or you're really good at setting up your objective so you can funnel the enemies into a much more narrow space. And this can be pretty awesome. Then I will go over the pixel peak a bit more once we get into a quick play so I can show you what that actually looks like a bit better but for now let's talk about the rpg i've noticed that heavies love to fire their rpg at barricades because they don't want you head glitching and destroying their whole team but if you back away a little bit and you place a second one it's very hard to tell that there's even two there and when they fire their rpg it will not only get rid of a lot of that damage although for some reason splash still goes through that second shield but you will still have your second shield Ideally, you would rather run an APS with a medium, but this is still a little workaround if you don't have one. But please keep in mind that grenades and C4 barrels and stuff like that will still pretty heavily counter barricades. So let's talk about firing the RPG over the barricade. If you try to fire the RPG over the barricade, it will usually blow you up. If someone has a high ground and you shoot upwards, it won't blow up. But if someone is ground level with you, it will blow up right in your face. Sometimes it doesn't happen now that there's bloom. If the bloom goes over the top half, it will not blow up. But if the bloom decides to go down, it will blow up in your face and it will do a lot of self damage. So let's hop into a quick play with my brother so I can show you guys a few more things. Now, this is the pixel peak that I was talking about earlier. It's really hard to tell, but I am hitting the shield a lot more than I'm hitting my brother. And from his perspective, he's able to hit me with every single shot. 
Now this is what the head glitch looks like from the enemy perspective. This looks way different than the way it does in the firing range with the test dummy because the heavy is a little shorter than the test dummy in the firing range. And even with one of the largest headgears in the game, it is very hard to see for the most part. And it is very hard to track, especially when they're strafing. So unless you have really good aim, it's going to be pretty hard to put very consistent shots on target. This is what the barricade looks like from high ground. My brother is trying his best to take cover and you can see that I'm still able to shoot his head. So yes, the a good counter to barricade is getting high ground, but now this is him able to shoot back at me. And while he does have a bit of cover and is much better than no cover at all, it is still not an ideal situation to be in. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you before we get into these clip breakdowns is you can block doorways and it's pretty hard for a heavy, especially to get through. Um, it's a little easier for mediums and lights, but you can also block these little mouse hole things. And there's no way a medium or light is getting through that hole unless they blow it up somehow or I mean they could try to shoot through it and you can break the barricade with bullets but it takes so many that it's really not worth doing so welcome to the first clip you will see immediately that I'm starting to goo up a lot of the objective because I want to control the flow of the enemy as much as I can. Then I head up to this balcony so I can get a vantage point over the objective. I also goo up this doorway right here, but I do not goo up the other one because I want to rotate out if I feel like I'm in danger. So I do have to be careful about that rotate because enemies can come from there and flank me. So I place down this first barricade so I can possibly just crouch if I need to. Maybe I can just simply focus my firepower on to the objective. But more importantly, I will be at the advantage in the gunfight. It's much easier for me to hit my target than it is for them. This second barricade was a bit more of an experimental placement. What I mean by that is I wanted to see if my mediums would use it maybe to strafe in and out of it or use it for more confident cover. Sometimes the only way to really learn and learn some unique strategies in this game is just to try weird stuff and see if it works. So I'm going to fast forward through this part quite a bit, but pretty much all that's going on is the enemies are trying to get a good angle onto the objective and push the objective, but they do quickly realize that they are at a severe disadvantage and I will have to give them their props because they do come up with a pretty decent strategy. So the enemies do a pretty unique flank. They come bashing through this wall from the opposite side of where I was expecting a flank. And the heavy does knock down one of the mediums and the two mediums on the enemy team put so much pressure onto the medium on my team that he ends up jumping off the balcony also. Now, this is where things get interesting. I think that those two mediums probably could have killed me if they would have put enough pressure onto me. I'm not sure if they got scared, they didn't want that smoke, they don't want that noise, so they jumped down also, or if they just simply wanted to regroup, but I don't know. I, I'm not sure how it would have played out if they would have made that choice instead. So now this is where I use my rotate to get out of the danger zone and it was perfectly timed because one of the mediums threw a grenade right up at me. So now I have wasted enough time to the point where all I have to do is focus on the objective and deny whoever is stealing the objective. This trap is so OP, dude. So this one is short, sweet, and simple. This one shows how efficient a barricade can be in the middle of a gunfight. I ran out of ammo, boom, just popped one down real quick, and I used that to try to reload. But you will also notice that I hesitated quite a bit because of that thing I talked about earlier, where sometimes it doesn't automatically switch to your primary weapon. And that's because I had two barricades in my inventory. I'm protecting I, you. I, my bad, I didn't have any. My bad, I ran out of ammo. From what? Bro, the shield did nothing. Bro, Ace, I've held that shield up and it did nothing. What was that? <laughs> so this is going to be the last clip, but I want you to keep a few things in the back of your head while watching this. Try to see how many times it has helped me win my gunfight, how many times the enemies don't even contest me, and I'm not in bot lobbies. These barricades just bring the bot out of people. <laughs> and I also want you to try to see and observe how many times that has helped out my teammates. It's kind of hard to see because they're out in the corners and I'm not looking directly at them a lot, but it does help them out quite a bit in these gunfights and then I will come back and talk about the last bit of this clip because that is also very important for learning how to defend sites. 
One's above, one's above at the hole. We came down. Good shit. Good shit. Coming up the stairs, am I right? Uh, full team, full team. Blue team? Blue team? I can't raise you that far. Yeah, that's alright. I'm gonna stay here. Be on me. All right, I am back, and this is extremely important. Remember how I talked about rotates earlier? I already planned subconsciously in the back of my head a rotate, and once I felt that we were getting a bit overwhelmed and a new team started to sweep in, I decided to rotate out. And my timing is also perfect because there is just enough time where now all I have to really do is deny the steal itself because people start to panic. They just start to hyper focus on just trying to get that steal and all you really have to do is deny the steal. Now this is something that is kind of hard to train your brain to do sometimes or at least for some people. I completely ignore whatever shooting at me, whoever's shooting at me, turret, whatever, to hyper focus on denying the objective because that is the only thing that matters. But then that barricade comes in clutch again. Not only do I use it against the turret, but I also use it against the guy that just attempted to steal the objective. All right, this is the end of the video, but if you have made it this far in the video, I want to let you in to a little secret. I am now being monetized on YouTube, and for those of you that will watch my entire videos, you are the most valuable to me, and I, in return, want to be more valuable to you. So if you want to make any suggestions, I will give you my Discord. It's a b o p number 3950. If you want to message me directly, feel free to. And also, if you want to leave any recommendations, feel free to do that either through Discord or through the comment section below. And thank you. Thank you for watching this entire video. You have a nice day.